You delete your embarrassing photos from Instagram, clear your search history, and deactivate Facebook. Poof, you're invisible online, right? But then your mom texts you a screenshot of that cringy tweet you posted three years ago that somehow still exists. I mean, how is that possible? Today, I'll explain why completely erasing yourself from the internet is way harder than just deleting your social media to you like you're five years old. And by the end, you'll understand why the internet never really forgets, even when you really, really want it to. It turns out, the internet isn't like your bedroom where you can just throw everything in the closet and pretend that it's clean. It's not a magic eraser that makes things disappear when you hit delete, and it's definitely not like a diary that only you can read. What it actually is, is more like a giant copy machine that makes invisible copies of everything you do and stores them in secret hiding places all over the world. Imagine the internet is like a huge magical city with millions and millions of invisible copy machines. Every time you post a photo, write a message, or even just visit a website, these copy machines go click 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 and make copies of what you did. But here's the tricky part. These copy machines don't just make one copy. They make lots and lots of copies, and then they send those copies to different neighborhoods in the internet city, where other copy machines make even more copies. It's like playing telephone, but instead of the message getting mixed up, it just gets copied perfectly and stored in a million different places. Now, let's talk about what happens when you think you're deleting something. When you delete a photo from Instagram, you're basically just telling one copy machine, hey, don't show this picture in my photo album anymore. But remember all those other copy machines that already made copies? They didn't get the memo. They're still holding onto their copies, tucked away in their secret filing cabinets, just in case someone needs them later. It's like telling your friend to throw away a drawing that you made, but forgetting that your teacher already made photocopies for the whole class. Your friend might throw theirs away, but everyone else still has theirs. The internet has something called web crawlers and internet archives. Now these sound scary, but they're actually just like really, really dedicated librarians with super good memories. Imagine if there was a librarian who followed you around all day with a camera, taking pictures of every book that you read, every note that you wrote, and every drawing that you made. That's basically what web crawlers do. They're invisible robot librarians that constantly visit websites and take snapshots of everything that they see. They're like, oh, this person posted a funny meme. Better save a copy. Oh look, they changed their profile picture. Better save that too. They never sleep, they never get tired, and they never forget to take their pictures. One of the biggest invisible librarians is called the Wayback Machine. Now, it's not actually a time machine or anything, even though it has a super cool name. It's more like a giant photo album that keeps pictures of what websites looked like on different days. So even if you delete your old blog from 2015, the Wayback Machine might still have pictures of what it looked like. It's like having a friend who took photos of your messy room every single day, and even though you cleaned your room, they still have all the photos of what it was messy. The Wayback Machine has been taking these internet photos since 1996, which means it has pictures of websites from before some of your parents were even born. But wait, there's more. Social media platforms themselves are like giant digital pack rats. You know how some people keep everything? Old newspapers, empty jars, that weird hat that they wore once. Social media companies do the exact same thing with your data, except they're much more organized about it. When you post something on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or Twitter, these companies don't just store your post on one computer. They make copies and store them on hundreds of different computers all around the world. And this is called data replication, which is a fancy way of saying making lots and lots of backup copies. But why do they make so many copies? Well, imagine if you wrote the most amazing story ever, and you only had one copy of it, and then your dog ate it. You'd be super sad, right? Well, social media companies don't want their servers to get eaten by dogs, or crash, or break, or get struck by lightning. So they make tons of copies and keep them in different places. Some copies might be in California, some might be in Ireland, some might be in Singapore. It's like having backup copies of your homework stored at your house, your grandma's house, your friend's house, and three other secret locations just in case. Even when you delete your account, these companies don't actually delete all your data right away. They might hide it from public view, they might keep copies for a while, sometimes months or even years. They say this is in case you change your mind and want to come back, or in case they need the data for legal reasons. It's like when you throw away a toy by putting it in your closet instead of the trash can. It's gone from your room, but it's not really gone gone. Then there are data brokers, which are like invisible information collectors that you've probably never heard of. These are companies that collect information about people and then sell it to other companies. They're like digital detectives who gather clues about what you like, where you go, what you buy, and what websites you visit. 
They get this information from lots of different places, public records, social media, shopping websites, apps on your phone, and even those loyalty cards you use at the grocery store. It's like having invisible spies who follow you around taking notes, except instead of one spy, there are hundreds of them, and they all share their notes with each other. Some of these data brokers have information about you that you didn't even know existed. I mean, they might know that you searched for how to get gum out of your hair last Tuesday, or that you spent 15 minutes looking at pictures of cute puppies, or that you always buy the same flavor of ice cream. They collect all these tiny pieces of information and put them together like a jigsaw puzzle to create a picture of who you are and what you like. And here's the really tricky part. Even if you've never directly given them your information, they can still have data about you from other sources. Your internet service provider, the company that brings internet to your house, also keeps records of what websites you visit. It's like having a librarian who writes down the title of every book that you check out. Even if you use private browsing or incognito mode, your internet provider can still see where you go online. Private browsing is like reading a book while wearing sunglasses. Sure, you might feel more hidden, but the librarian can still see what book that you picked up. And let's not forget about all the other people who might have saved or shared your content. Remember that embarrassing photo you posted, then quickly deleted? Well, what if your friend took a screenshot before you deleted it? What if someone shared it to their story? What if it got reposted to another account? It's like trying to unring a bell or unpop a balloon. Once something is out there and other people have seen it, you can't control what they do with it. They might save it, they might share it, they might post it somewhere else, and now there are going to be copies floating around that you have no control over. Even your phone and computer keep copies of things that you might not expect. Your browser saves copies of websites that you visit in something called a cache. It's like your computer's way of saying, I'll just keep a copy of this website in case you want to look at it again later, so I don't have to download it again. Your phone might automatically back up your photos to the cloud, which means copies of your pictures are stored on someone else's computer, even if you delete them from your phone. It's like having a magical copying machine in your pocket that makes copies of everything and sends them to a secret storage facility. Search engines like Google also keep records of what you search for. Even if you delete your search history, Google might still have records of your searches stored on their servers. They use this information to show you better search results and ads, but it also means that there's a record of that time that you search for Do Fish Have Feelings at 2am. It's like having a friend with really good memory who remembers every weird question that you've ever asked. Then there are all the websites that use something called cookies and tracking pixels. These aren't the kinds of cookies that you eat, though. They're tiny, invisible files that websites put on your computer to remember things about you. It's like having invisible sticky notes that websites leave on your computer that say things like, this person likes cat videos, or this person looked at shoes but didn't buy any. Even if you clear your cookies, websites might have already sent that information to other companies, and those companies might have already made their own copies. Government agencies and law enforcement also keep records of internet activity. In many countries, internet providers are required to keep logs of what their users do online for a certain period of time. It's like having official record keepers who write down everything that happens in the internet city, just in case they need to look something up later. Even if you delete something from your end, these official records might still exist. So what can you actually do if you want to minimize your digital footprint? Well, it's kind of like trying to clean up glitter. You can get most of it, but there will probably always be a few sparkly pieces hiding in unexpected places. You can start by deleting your social media accounts, but remember to actually delete them, not just deactivate them. Deactivating them is like hiding your toys in a box, while deleting them is actually giving them away. But even then, the companies might keep copies for a while. You can contact data brokers and ask them to remove your information, but there are hundreds of these companies, and new ones pop up all the time. It's like playing whack-a-mole, but the moles are invisible and they just keep on multiplying. You can use privacy-focused search engines and browsers. You can also use a VPN to hide your location, and you can be more careful about what you share online. But remember, the internet has a really, really good memory, and once something's online, it's really hard to make it completely disappear. The truth is, completely erasing yourself from the internet is almost impossible, kind of like trying to unbake a cake or unmix chocolate milk. The ingredients are all mixed together now, and separating them back out is incredibly difficult. The internet is designed to keep copies of everything, to never lose information, and to connect all these copies together. That's actually one of its strengths. It means important information doesn't get lost, and you can find almost anything that you're looking for. But it also means that embarrassing photo from middle school might be lurking somewhere in the digital universe forever. So, to recap for my 5-year-old digital detectives, 
The internet is like a giant city full of invisible copy machines that never stop making copies of everything that you do online. When you delete something, you're usually just hiding it from view, but the copies are still stored in lots of different secret places. Completely disappearing from the internet is super hard, because there are so many different places keeping copies from your digital footprints. The internet never really forgets, even when you really, really want it to. But now you know why your mom can still find that old tweet. Because somewhere out in the internet city, an invisible copy machine is still holding onto it, just waiting for the right moment to say, remember when you posted this? You're basically playing hide and seek with a city full of elephants who never forget anything.